Hey there, I'm Dpad Gamer, and I'd like to start this video off with something different. It's hard for me to believe, but somehow 10,000 people who have watched my videos decided, yeah, I'll subscribe. I can't thank you all enough, so I decided to make this video which is almost entirely self-serving. I'm going to revisit my favorite video game which also happens to be the focus of my first Easter egg video. It is time to take a look at glitches in Banjo-Kazooie. Let's start off with a minor dialogue skip, not unlike Mario 64 with its Lakiju skip. At the top of Spiral Mountain, our friend Bottles is waiting to ambush us. Getting around him is surprisingly simple. Just backflip and land on this corner. From here, jump and feather flap over to the bridge for a successful skip. Next, we'll move on to the first world of this game, Mumbo's Mountain. There's Jiggies, Notes, and Jinjos to be collected. If we play like normal, then we'll need Mumbo's transformation magic to allow you to climb certain slopes. Instead, we could just not do that, and we'll save time. First is the Termite Hill, but it's really more of a tower. The platforms inside are supposed to be too steep for Banjo, but if you time your jumps properly, it's possible to climb the whole thing as you see here. Outside the level, you could also climb this slippery slope with some well-timed movement. If I'm being completely honest, I sort of just mash buttons, but eventually it worked for me, so give it a shot, I'm sure it'll work for you too. Over in Treasure Trove Cove, things start getting interesting. You can quick kill Nipper the Hermit Crab by getting way into his personal space. Navigate around to the side and jump onto his shell, ground pound, and fall into the trigger for his dialogue. The fight will start and you're inside of him. Three attacks and he's dead, and the jig inside is ours. Okay, enough useful stuff, let me show you how to crash the game. First, let me introduce you to the Yum Yum Clams. If they touch Banjo and Kazooie, the duo will drop a red feather and egg. Next is Leaky the Bucket, who needs eggs pooped into him to fix his leak. If you drop some eggs into Leaky and jump over in front of Yum Yum Clam with a bit of luck, it'll attack Banjo during the dialogue and the game will crash. Oh, and if you fill up Leaky, jump into the water and start swimming before his dialogue activates? This will happen. For some reason, Banjo's model is now tilted, and he stays his way until he starts walking. It doesn't really help with much, but it looks pretty neat, so that's all that matters. In Clanker's Cavern, you can get inside his mouth without unchaining him. That sounds very wrong when I said it out loud. Normally, you have to swim down to the lock holding Clanker's chain and set him free. Once he's surfaced, you shoot eggs into his gold teeth and enter his mouth. Okay, it's still weird with contacts either way. Alternatively, you can drop eggs down into the water and with the right timing, break his tooth early. So, if you don't know, the water outside Bubble Goop Swamp is filled with piranhas. Whenever Banjo enters, he takes damage every few seconds. Right around here, if you enter the water in a very particular spot, Banjo will start paddling. He can swim around without fear of being hurt until he exits the water. Speaking of damaging water, let's transition over to Freeze Easy Peak. In Wazo's cave, there's an empty honeycomb to be collected. Normally, the wall of transformation is required to walk underwater. Instead, we can do something called a quick dive. Jump over near the wall and let go of all inputs right before hitting the water. Banjo will drop to the bottom and you can swim right through. If you're not sure what a quick dive is, let's take a look at that. When using the Town Trot, if you fall off a ledge as you let go of all inputs, Banjo will dive very quickly. It's not exactly game breaking, but it's very helpful. Alright, back to Super Cold Summit. Let me introduce you to the Twinklies, a collection of sentient light bulbs. They need to reach the Christmas tree, but unfortunately, there's Twinkly munchers in the way. In a short minigame, Banjo has to clear the path with various attacks. Or, just don't. Instead, after opening the box, immediately attack the first muncher and move here. The munchers won't actually spawn, despite the noises you hear. The Twinklies are free to travel to the tree and burn alive as they produce pretty light for us. I think it's time for our first wall clip so far, located in Gobi's Valley. Let me show you how to get inside the Sphinx without ever opening the door. Between knockbacks, perform a beak barge into the wall. With a bit of luck, Banjo will zip to the left and end up inside the Sphinx. Just hop over to the loading zone behind the door and you're in. Once you leave, Banjo will walk right through the door. There's a jiggy that we want to collect in this room. It's inside the coffin, which only opens after the witch switch in Gobi's Valley is activated. Again, let's not do that. Use the shock spring pad to jump up here. If you roll, Banjo's collision will extend forward slightly, and he'll grab the jiggy no problem. Moving on to Mad Monster Mansion, let me show you how to walk underwater. As you enter the well from above, hold up left on the control stick while mashing the A button. Banjo will flap over the wall's collision and end up paddling outside the well. If you jump away and then land back in bounds, Banjo will now be walking around like normal. While you're down here, you can collect nodes and even destroy the vines if you feel like it. If you're unsure, you can enter the bucket through a small hole, but it requires some well-placed thrusts. Again, that sounds weird. 
Have you ever wanted to drown outside of water? Probably not, but let me show you how to do it in Rusty Bucket Bay. If you wait around in the water, Banjo's air will slowly deplete. If you time it properly, you can jump out of the water as Banjo dies, and you get this wonderful scene. There's a particular jiggy in this level that is just the worst. It's located behind the ship's spinning propellers, which can only be stopped by hitting two separate switches. The engine room is one big bottomless pit, with a bunch of spinning platforms. If you want to save yourself time, you could actually slide through the wall right here. Just run into the seam and crouch, and with enough luck or persistence, you'll end up on the other side. Great if you want to save yourself the hassle of fighting both the clock and the environment. Rusty Bucket Bay is home to another boss, and there's a pretty great skip if you want to do it. This is Boombox, an angry box who grabbed a jiggy and only lets go once he's defeated. Instead, if you fire eggs towards the center of the room, the fight will start with no cutscene. That is not intended, and the jiggy is left in the air waiting to be grabbed. It's time for Click Clock Wood, get it? Eh, bad joke. During spring, walk over here above Naughty's house. Drop some eggs over the edge so that they destroy the boulder. That totally makes sense, eggs are stronger than stone as you know. Destroying the boulder this early is unintended, and Naughty will not react at all. When you get inside, things aren't normal. If you jump outside the tunnel, you could actually hover back and bounce, and now you'd be walking underwater. It's much less useful than the wall earlier, but it's still pretty neat. When playing through this game normally, Grunty's Furnace Fun board game is quite fun. Regardless, sometimes you want to use glitches. It's possible to skip the majority of the board as well as the credits. Navigate around the board so you can approach this square from the top. It is a skull panel where answering incorrectly will instantly kill Banjo by throwing him into the lava. Stand at the very top right corner of the panel and answer incorrectly. Banjo will be thrown and land on the board assuming your position was correct. Now, you can walk around freely, use moves if you want, but be careful. If you drop into the lava, you'll still die, and you'll have to restart the whole board over again. While here, we can take a better look at Grunty, who along with the podium is completely untouchable. We could also get a better look at Tootie, who is just insanely tall compared to her older brother Banjo. But since the game board has been technically completed, we can now move on to the final boss fight. Atop Grunty's lair is the final battle, where falling to your death means d death. If you drop off the edge and get hit by Grunty before falling below the fog, this happens. Congratulations, the game is now softlocked. It's still running, but the only way to get out of this is to reset the console. Isn't that awesome? And now it's time for the glitches that don't fit anywhere else. If you collect the jiggy while jumping into the water, Banjo will just hold onto it. It'll stick with him until he jumps out of the water, or walks on land. Strangely enough, while I tried this, I believe I did a quick dive, and this happened. Something else you can do is try dying while activating cutscene, which takes place in a different area. You'll still lose a life, but you'll be right back there with full health. So hey, that's useful, right? While on the topic of an undead banjo, you can survive with no health by beak bombing into a wall. You want to hit the wall on the very last frame of the attack, or something along those lines. After enough attempts, it worked for me. You'll now be walking around with no health, but some weird things can happen. If you touch a beehive, which normally doesn't hurt banjo, you'll die. If you pause and unpause the game, you'll technically die. If you leave the level, you'll also technically die. Speaking of weird things, I think we'll end this video with something called the Reverse Bee Adventure. Oh, no not like that. What we want to do is first transform into the bee with the help of Mumbo in the spring version of Click Clock Woods. Bumble Banjo can't attack or do much of anything other than Infinite Fly, which is very helpful. Like most other transformations, we could leave the world, but Mumbo's magic turns off after a certain point. There's a couple ways to leave in this area, but we'll do a clip which requires the PAL version of the game. First, fly up to this corner. While attempting this clip, hold the B button. We want to angle Banjo down so that his feet are inside the wall. Tap the A button three or four times. If you don't clip out, repeat the A presses with a slight pause in between. If you do get out, be careful not to fly too high or too far. Doing so will cause Banjo to void out, causing him to be back at the Click Clock Wood entrance. So once you're out, let go of B, and from here fly down to this tunnel and land in the door. There you go, now you're outside and go wherever you want. This breaks the game, so if you get a chance, definitely try it out for yourself. I'll leave you with one neat example of B Banjo. Enjoy! Thank <laughs> you.
Thanks for watching the video. There are still more glitches I didn't include, so feel free to complain in the comments. I'm not perfect. If you'd like to watch more videos of mine, follow the links on screen. Like the video if you feel like it, and maybe even subscribe. Thanks again for watching. I will see you next time.